and welcome to another episode of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show with me, Jana McCabe. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Derry City Vice Captain Kate Tolan and Bally Clare star, well, soon to be star, Megan Ingram. <laughs> Thank you both for joining me today. Kate, it was a tough season last year for Derry, but you managed it in the end. Talk me through the season. Was, uh, it was my first season at senior football as well, just joining Derry. Um, we knew going into the season like we didn't have the strongest team in the league, but I, we got it at the end. We got the nine points we needed and we stayed up. A big first season for you in senior football. Definitely. The managers, Paul, Mitch and Johnny, like, showed great faith in me. I started every game like, and that's what I wanted. I wanted to play football and that's why I went to Derry. And the end, we got the job done. You must have been right the impression because you're vice captain there now. I uh, they show great faith in me, like for them just coming in and me just coming in. So I was happy with it. Megan, a tough year for you two at Crusaders. Maybe you didn't get as much game time as you would have liked, but a good experience still. Yeah, of course. It's a great club. Um and I wasn't really as involved obviously just because I was injured and I was doing a lot of rehabilitation on my own. But um yeah, they still finished finished well on the table and obviously they're working hard in preseason now, so yeah. Must have been frustrating not being able to be involved as much as you thought you were going to be. Always, yeah. Um, I've sort of I've been on and off season wise with, with injury and um, battling injury, so I'm sort of like used to it a wee bit. Um, but um, I'm glad to sort of be back on the road to recovery and hopefully get a, get a full season in me this year. So. I'm sure you said you're kind of back to back injuries. It doesn't get any easier though. No, no, definitely not. Um, and I do find that the mental aspect of an injury is always the hardest. Like the physical wise, you're going to rehab and you've got somebody like monitoring that, but like nobody prepares you for the setbacks or, you know, like um, having to deal with not taking part in training or like, you know, sometimes it's always even frustrating going to games and maybe everybody's not performing like, you know, to their maximum potential and you're like, oh, I'm injured. Like I'd give anything to be out there, but um, honestly, it's just fuel for, and motivation for me just to try to always work as hard to just sort of get back on the pitch. And a new experience for you this year in a new chapter with Ballyclare. Yeah. I'm sure you're excited just to get started now and get on that pitch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been sort of training and stuff. I'm still no contact, but um, fingers crossed for the next maybe like four or six weeks, hopefully. So, yeah. And Kate, pre-season as well, under with Derry as well. How's it gone for you so far? It's going good. We're on now probably nearly over two months. Um, we've had a few pre-season games. We've signed a good few players. So it's looking good for the season. I don't know about you, but I feel like everybody has made a lot of signings this year. Everybody. And Derry have themselves. Has definitely. that really strengthened your squad going into the season? It has, definitely. We've made a good few signings. It'll definitely strengthen us for the season ahead. Um, so we'll be a different team this year. And how have they fit in? Have you just Has everybody kind of fit in nicely? Good, I think from last year, Derry, like we showed a lot of fight, like, and the players that have come in have came off us on that as well. Maybe it was your first season last year, but because it was such a big season, do you kind of feel like you're coming this year as somebody who's been there and kind of done it and you kind of can help them along? Definitely, I feel like I've been Derry for years, so I, f I definitely feel like I can do that to the girls. And what about the fans and stuff? You seem to have a good community around at Derry that kind of get behind the team. The city's definitely so involved in the team. Like you have the men's and women's team all at the Brandywell, so the, it's a good community like part. And what's it like playing at the Brandywell? It's such a huge stadium, so it is. You know. uh, it, we're lucky to have it, so that we have the privilege of playing on it every week. Like the stadium, it, it is good for us. A lot of running. A lot of running. I. It's a big pitch. It's a huge pitch. I. Is that where you train as well, or do you have like a separate training? No, we train at the Brandywell as well. It's be wrecked. I, I, <laughs> imagine doing laps at the Brandywell. It's a massive pitch, it is. Megan, another new experience with Ballyclare, your oldest age category that you're going to be coaching. Mm -hmm. That's a really good experience, I'm sure, for you. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. The girls are great. Um, it is my oldest um, age group that I've coached, so that, that has come with some difficulties, obviously, like coaching older women um, and learning how to manage them. But I've really enjoyed it, and they've they've been... They've been great for me. So, at Crusaders, you were kind of saying it was quite young kids, yeah. whereas this is adults. How much difficult is that transition from kind of kids to kind of grown women? I mean, it is a little bit difficult because I've I've had like um, experience with older adults. Obviously, like um, back in America, I would have gone back and done like camps for my college and stuff, and then I was captain, so. I know how to like you know manage older girls. It just maybe wasn't as fresh in my mind with the kid with the younger kids. It's basically just about 
keeping them engaged, making them fall in love with football and want to come to training every week. Whereas with the older girls, it's more about like, you know, formation, thinking about like, you know, being proactive in the game, things like that. So, um, but it is good, you know what I mean? It's like a double-edged sword. So it, it's been nice um, experience both, both ways. And maybe something that you couldn't have told the younger kids was kind of all of your injury kind of setbacks, but maybe these older girls, you can kind of give them some motivation if they are getting injuries or if they're kind of coming back from injury that, you know, you've been there and look now at you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Touch wood, we've not had any injuries thus far, but yeah, definitely I've got ex injury experience for, for when anybody does get injured, so. And there's a big tournament coming up for you guys back in the States for you. Are you excited yes. to get back home? Really? <laughs> well, it's, it's sort of a five hour plane ride for me, but I think uh, my parents are going to come up, so I'm excited to see them. But no, it's going to be a really great experience for the girls. It's a week in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So there's teams from all over um, the country and also all over the world. Um, and it's like basically a game a day. Um, but also just like there's the Mall of America there. And so it's just going to be a really great experience for, for them. And I'm also looking forward to it for myself, obviously, to do some shopping. So. <laughs> Yeah. What do you mean? Belfast shopping's best. <laughs> <laughs> ta, ta, ta. <laughs> and it's also a huge thing for a team from Northern Ireland to be competing in a tournament like that. Yeah, Linfield went last year. I think they took a team. I don't think it was under 19. I'm maybe under 15 or under 13. But um, and that's how JP, who who sort of brought me on board, he found out about this USA Cup thing through the Linfield team. So um, they're sort of familiar, I guess, with with teams coming over. For this tournament so is it easier for you to scout you know what who you might play against because obviously you're from america you might know some little tricks i did ask if there are any north carolina teams going over but as of when i asked there weren't any and i wouldn't know the first thing about football in minnesota so <laughs> um but yeah they did say there's some teams like from the caribbean there's a swedish team just different th th things like that so it'll be good to just even just see what football's like all across you know the world and what the standards like from from different teams from different places so it'll be just op eye-opening really and a completely new coaching experience for you something like that something going away with a team yeah no it's it's a once in a lifetime experience so i'm really honored to be involved with the girls and stuff so yeah we're going to take a short break here in studio and catch up with colin who headed to the oval this week to catch up with the reigning champions glenn torn and see how they're preparing to defend their title over to you colin With only weeks to go before the start of the 2024 Sports Direct Women's Premiership, the NI Women's Football Show headed down to the Oval to catch up with the defending champions Glentorn Women's Football Club. First up, we asked them who they thought would be their biggest rivals for the season ahead. Who do you see as the main challengers in terms of the league? Well, obviously it's always going to be Cliftonville, the top two between us and them, but you know, there's loads of other teams around them that can also challenge, like the Crusaders, Linfield, there's loads of other ones, Lisbon Rangers have only came up and I have played them a few times with Ballyclare and at, at, at times we have challenged them in the game, so I think it'll be really exciting to see uh, what the league's going to bring for us this year. I think, of course, Cliftonville, um, our main rivals, who you know we've rivaled for a few, like a few years now. Um, but I think as the teams keep on getting better week on week, it gets harder. So it's going to be everyone's a competitor. You know, this year there's no teams that you would look at and you would think it's going to be an easy day because none of them are easy days now. Um, and especially when you have to travel away, the likes of Derry, it's such a difficult game to play. So um, there's not going to be any easy games this year, and and that's going to shine through who's the real champion then who can be the most consistent um, I'd probably say the biggest challenge will still be Cliftonville they've still got, they've got a really strong team they've lost a few players but they've also brought in high quality players and they'll still be really challenging I think Lisburn will pose a big threat but hopefully we'll still be on top and Linfield have brought in so many more players as well so it'll be interesting to see what their team looks like in the season it's hard to say um, this early on. I think a, a lot of teams have strengthened. Um, obviously, Cliftonville ran us really close last season. It's been really competitive between ourselves and then the last few seasons. But like you say, you know, Linfield, Derry um, have strengthened. Lisburn Rangers have come up. So yeah, I think we'll, we'll have a really competitive league. Obviously, coming off the back of last year, we're feeling um, very confident in, in our abilities and everything that we achieved as a team last year. Uh, last year we were the chasers, and um, this year we're obviously the champions. So everyone's chasing us this year which is a nice position to be in and obviously that pressure is a privilege. 
Um, yeah, I can't wait. You know, it feels it feels a long time since the end of last season, and it's been really good that I could be back in um, with everybody all together again. And yeah, can't can't wait to get started. Amy, yeah, this is your first season with Lentor, and you're looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's really exciting. You know, there's loads of players in the team that are, um, I'm really encouraged by, and you know, they're really good to learn off and different way ideas that they're giving you on the pitch is really helping. And just the standard of play and different things that they do is really exciting for me to learn off. And hopefully, I can take more of that this season and get some minutes in the bank as well. Thank you, Colin, for that. It won't be very long until the action gets back underway, but we'll get back to it in the studio. Kate, you haven't quite made it to America yet, but you've got a good amount of experience in Glasgow. What was that like for you? It was brilliant. I loved my time at Glasgow. I only was over there a year, but I'd love to go back. You were over there with your sister. You kind of roomed with her. What was it like having your sister there with you? It was Easier? brilliant. I definitely I loved it. Tyler played for the first team, and then I played for the under-19, so it was, it was a good experience. You had to come back for uni. Was that a tough choice to come back? I was always coming back anyway. I finished school at 16 and Tyler asked me to move over and I had the opportunity to play for a year. So I, I took it and then I knew I was coming home anyway. And your sister Tyler, she's had a lot of experience across the water. There must be somebody that you can look up to, somebody in your own family who's kind of done it. Definitely. She's my biggest inspiration to play. Um, she signed for Man City when she was 18. So hopefully one day I can do it too. And is that kind of your goal, to get across the water and sign a pro contract like she did? I think that's every player's goal, to go and play professionally. I'd love to do it. And Megan, you have been here six years, is it now? Coming up on six years, yeah. Is it going to say it's better than North Carolina? I don't think I could say that, no. <laughs> I mean, I do really like it here, and obviously, like, I've been here six years, but, you know, home is home, and... So it's sort of hard to say that, that anywhere could beat that, do you know? The football kind of side of it is quite different back home to here though, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, everything's sort of through your school and um, obviously going to university and, and scholarships, everything's so competitive. Um, whereas here it's more club based, um, but just as competitive. So, yeah. When you were in university yourself, you obviously did very, very well, and you were captain as well for a bit? I was captain my senior year, yeah, and while I was there, we did like a three-peat, so that means we won um, like the conference championship three years in a row, so it was an awesome experience, um, and I, I, I gained a lot of like, you know, obviously experience from that, just with lifting and the strength and conditioning and the fitness and, and, and sort of all of that, um, which I'm now sort of putting into my team, so it's nice to be able to sort of understand why you were having to wake up at six in the morning when you didn't want to whereas now I'm like okay I, I understand why so yeah and it's going to be a big season for you going into the coaching and then also you're going to be playing for Ballyclare they want to really push for that promotion this year yeah definitely and they've been putting in work in the off season and they've started doing strength and conditioning with Don Melio out in Nortel and um, they've brought in, you know, like fitness running and things like that. Um, and then they've had a few preseason friendlies and stuff. So, um, yeah, everybody's putting in work, obviously, to, to try to win, win the league, which is everybody's goal at the end of the day. So, yeah. You obviously had a lot of success back in your university days and maybe didn't get as much of Crusaders, but you definitely know how to win. So I'm sure you're hoping for more silverware at Valley Clare. Yeah, definitely. I think everybody loves to win. Everybody who's competitive, who, who plays sports, they thrive off of it. That that feeling of, of winning is like no other. So to experience that with Valley Clare, definitely to, to be able to, to play a part in bringing them to the Premier League would, would be awesome. So, yeah. As Kate, as somebody in the Premier League, just how tough is it? You, you know, yourself last year was kind of tough for Derry, but how tough is it in general to kind of stay there? I definitely, um, it was touch and go for us for a while. Um, it, is, it is a good standard, like, of the league. Um, the teams at the top of the league like, really puts it up against us. They try and play like against girls who are playing internationally. There's a lot of Northern Ireland internationals in the league. So it, it's a great league to play in, having that opportunity to play against girls who are playing international football. And do you want to push with Derry this year and maybe not have that kind of scariness of maybe going down? I think we'll definitely push on this year. We're looking good in pre-season. We've signed a good few players. I think we'll do well this year. And what would that goal be with Derry then this year? They push to probably further mid table up the top off of the table this year. Is there a team that's in the Premiership at the minute that you've kind of seen come through and you're like we kind of want to follow in their suit or you just want to do it the Derry way? No, we'll pave our own way, the Derry way. 
and it's going to be so much more competitive as well with Lisbon Rangers. Sorry, I'm not mentioning Lisbon Rangers because they obviously came up instead of you guys, but they've come up and that's a fresh new team coming in. Definitely, I, I played against them the whole way up through underage with Cyan. We have played against them every season, so I know them to play against. So we'll be, they're a good team to join the league, so it'll be good. And it's good to see the league kind of go from strength to strength? Definitely, it is. It grows every year. It's brilliant for the league. And it's not only the Premiership that's grown from strength to strength, the Championship is as well. Saying off camera that the teams that are even coming up from Division 1 are pushing for promotion. Yeah. That must be tough, you know, seeing them come up and all the other teams in Sion dropping down too. It's a really difficult league. I think that's what's going to make it so interesting to follow this year is that it's anybody's game essentially so each each team each game will have to go out and give their best and try to win you know just game by game just like you learn each lesson you know you learn your opponent and, and you, you sort of grow as a team and as, as a player each game so that's all all we can do and just try to win and yeah. It must be exciting though that there's going to be so much kind of on each game and it's going to be all so important. Yeah it's a lot of pressure definitely Um I've obviously had a lot of experience playing. I'm a, I am a little bit older, and and so I, I thrive off that pressure a little bit. Do you know what I mean? I, I live for it. Um, so it's just about bringing the younger players because Ballyclare is quite a young side, and making them you know understand the weight of of each game, but also letting them understand that you have to go out there and you have to enjoy it to be able to give your all. So it's just um, you know we've been working hard in the off season and gelling as a team and. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's definitely something that Ballyclare have done well in the past in terms of juniors, you know, kind of stepping up and making that mark, like the likes of Amy Kerr and stuff, they've all done so brilliantly. So it's good to see that the, that youth can cope with that pressure. Yeah, um, she was a big loss, obviously, Amy Kerr, um, going to the Glens. Um, and then a couple other um, team members obviously have, have left the squad. But um, JP, the head coach, he's done a good job at recruiting. He's tried to obviously recruit older players just to maybe balance it out with that maturity. Um, but the young players that are there, you've got Wee Molly Weir and Zoe Johnston and, and they're in the Northern Ireland setup as well and they're strong players and they're on the up and up. And so, I, you know, it's just awesome to get to play with them and sort of play a role in their, you know, debut or coming up into the, into the game of football, so yeah. That must be very rewarding for you. Yeah, I know, and, and they are on the under-19s team, so it's just, um, I just like to, to sort of just try to learn as much as I can about, about, you know, every player that I play with as well as coach, just because I feel like it makes me become a better person and, you know, a better player, and, and that's basically what it's all about, you know, just learning and, and trying to go out there and do your best, so, yeah. We're going to take another break in the studio, but it's technically not really a break today. It's something a little bit different because Rachel McGill is back from university and she'll be in the studio joining me to tell me what she's been up to while she's been ditching me and probably losing more crossbar challenges. I feel like this is a bit of a different one today because anytime Rachel is here, she is presenting alongside me, but you're actually across from me today. <laughs> I know, Welcome I Rachel. How's it, how's it been over in England? It's very good yeah it's different like getting over um, obviously football is a lot bigger in England and I'm near two of the biggest WSL teams so that's just fabulous. If you want to explain maybe to people that don't know who you are what you're doing and why you're not hosting with me anymore. So I'm Rachel um, I obviously was at 1880 before but now I live in Manchester and I'm studying football business and media at the university campus of football business. You make it sound very fancy. University football. <laughs> <laughs> well practiced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, evidently. But they've given you, you've had so many experiences so far. I feel like you've hardly been away, but you've done so much. Yeah, they're so good that way that they have so many different connections. Um, so like we've had chances to talk to people in the Premier League. I'm obviously doing some stuff with Burnley this year. Um, even not just in football, you know, there's chances to do stuff in ice hockey with the Storm, um, which, yeah, you obviously love. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's been so great getting out there. Um, and obviously the classes are tailored to football too, so I'm just getting to live it every day. It just feels like a dream for you. I, I obviously know you well, and it's kind of always what you've wanted to do. So it is your dream, what you're doing right now. Yeah, it really is. Um, and like getting to go to WSL matches every weekend and I'm getting to cover some of them. It's just a dream. Go on, tell your United story. Let the, let the <laughs> viewers hear what I've heard about three times or more. <laughs> well, um, so I've just started with a company called The Halfway Line and I got to do a 
press conference with Mark Skinner and he gave me a fist bump. <laughs> so I feel like I've made it now. You can't really top that. What if I give you a fist bump? <laughs> same level, same Let's level. Say, okay, yeah. uh, forgiven. And you're not long until you're back home for summer, kind of at Easter, you're home now, and then back over for three weeks, isn't it? Yeah, it feels like I've barely been away and now I'm coming home again. Like, I've got three more weeks. Obviously, I've got assignments coming up. Um, and then, like, the season's over and obviously then the season here starts, so I get to be back for some of it. That's perfect. You can come back to 1880. Come back for a bit, Join yeah. me. Yeah. And the cold pitches and no <laughs> bad weather. Yeah. It's quite close to Manchester, though. It never stops raining. Mm. And what is the day in your life kind of like now, whenever you're over there and you're studying? Oh, OK. Um, well, my classes are out in Media City, so I'm, like, right in the heart of it all. You know, BBC and all's out there. Um, and then I have done quite a lot of things. So i have doing a project at the minute. I'm on a year-long project with Burnley um, called The Hive. So I get to do some stuff with them, meeting their media team. Um, we got to go out to actually one of the matches and shadow some of their uh, people, which has been good. Um, so yeah, lots of different things going on. Has it kind of opened your eyes that you really want to do this now whenever you finish uni? Yeah, definitely. Like the more you get to experience it, the more you're like, I want to do this. I think like um, here, obviously, the country's so small. There's, you know, football's not as big, but you go over and, you know, you've got the 92 teams across the football league. And um, yeah, there's loads of women set up as well, um, even down to the National League. There's so many teams in Manchester. Um, so getting to get experience all around that has really opened my eyes to say that's what I want to do. Still missing the NIWFA games, even though you will see them. Yeah, I am missing them, yeah. Can't wait for the season to start and catch up and see everyone and get around some of the different teams because I've missed everyone while I've been away. Oh, so you're just flattering me now because you want me to ask nice questions. Yeah, I've missed Jana so much. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you looking forward to being back home? What football thing are you looking forward to? Ooh, um, I do like a cup final. I do like the Irish cup final. I like that. But no, just getting around, you know, seeing everybody, getting to see, you know, all different teams. There's so many different teams this year. Obviously, they've expanded. There's a development league, so hopefully, get to see a lot of them. What are you thinking of the leagues this year? Obviously, there's more teams than ever now in them. It just gets more competitive every year. Like you look at the top team right down. Like the championship is crazy this year. Um, even the development t like league, there's so many teams in there that they've done well so far in their pre-season. So going in, you know, everyone's been strong. So I'm really excited to see how everyone does. We mentioned with those studio guests that championship, like. It's anybody's game this year, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And like uh, with Sion and stuff, and obviously everyone wants to go up. And the teams that have come up from Division One, they can 100% go up this year too. There's so many. It'll definitely be exciting, and I'm glad that you'll be by my side at <laughs> some of the games now. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming into the studio today. But we're going to go back to the actual guests for today now. Kate, you've obviously had experience with Sion and then Derry. It just, as I said earlier, the Premiership has grown, but in general, women's football over here has just grown, I'm sure, a lot in, since you've been involved. Definitely. I started with Sion when I was 11, and the league's massively come on since then. There's so many opportunities now, and you can see players going across the water as well to England from the league, so it's great to see. You mentioned there that going over to England and abroad is somewhere thing that you want to do. Is there anybody that's kind of made that move that you kind of inspired to be like, apart from your sister? Tyler's my main one. Um, I just kind of want to go anywhere anyway. I'll pave my own way. But there has been a lot of players that have made that move, probably a lot more than I've ever seen. Definitely, there is. There's a lot in the past few years. It's good to see, though. It shows that there is that option there for you. And you kind of showed your own initiative with the Glasgow move, didn't you? I, well, I finished school when I was 16 and again I just wanted a year to do something and Tyler offered me to come over to her so I asked her to have a trial and that's how I got in for the year. The rest is history. How did, how did you have the confidence to go and be like, can I have a trial please? Sure, you were ner nervous doing it. Tyler asked for me, like, so she was in the first team and yeah, I just went and I had a week and got in so it was good for me. Would you ever like to play on the same team as your sister, or do you think that would be too too close to home? No, definitely. She's we're very close, so that's what I'd love to do. What do you reckon she'd be like as a teammate? <laughs> I think she'd be your hardest cr credit, maybe on she the pitch. She is definitely. I so I'd say she would be like that on the pitch. <laughs> Megan, do you have any personal goals for this year? Um, 
<clears throat> stay healthy, stay injury free, um, and to help obviously Ballyclare win the championship and get promoted. Those are my three goals. What do you know about the Premiership? Obviously the teams of Derry are in it and you're kind of pushing up for it this year. Yeah, um, I know it's a, it's a competitive league, obviously being with Cruz um, for so long. Um, the Glens and, and um, Cliftonville obviously would be sort of the top two, but I think obviously, um, as she was saying, you know, Derry's made a lot of progress in the off season and um, obviously Lisbon are coming up. So I think it will be a little bit more competitive. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as well. Um, so, yeah. Maybe you didn't get as much game time as you would have hoped at Crusaders at the end, but I'm sure it kind of helped you with this now because you kind of were able to see the team still that you know you might be battling next year with Ballyclare. Yeah, definitely a little bit of insight, anyways. Um, but I'm sure there's a lot of you know players in the championship that have played in the Premiership um, that would also have that insight. So might not be too special in that in that regard. But and what about back home? Are any of them going to maybe come over and see you this year, play for Ballyclare, touch wood when you get back on that pitch? Um, my dad, I think, is coming over sometime in May, so I'm sort of aiming to try to be back on the pitch by then so we can come out to a game. Um, but my mom still hasn't made the jump across, so I'm holding out my breath on that. But um, I try to get back once a year just to see them, really, and, and it's always during the summer so I can soak up the sunshine. So, yeah. Do they think you've picked up a little bit of a Belfast accent? Absolutely. They're like, why are you saying that that way? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know why. But as soon as I go back home, I pick up the Southern twang because my family are like super Southern. So just next time you'll have to be like, stop it, you melter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm walking in like, well, what's the crack? And they're like, sorry, crack, what? <laughs> what's so, that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And your mom hasn't been over here, but I'm sure you think she would enjoy it over here. She's been over here, obviously, whenever um, her and my dad were like getting married and stuff. Um, but um, she's just like a homebody, do you know? She, we've got my wee dog and she's got like a lovely house and a lovely backyard. And I wouldn't want to leave, like it was hard to leave that. So, um, but I'm hoping to get her over. I do think she would enjoy it, especially during the summer months, not during the winter, but. Do we have a summer over here? Yeah, I must I know, have missed like it. The week that we're <laughs> I think even a week is uh, nice. I know. You kind of mentioned off camera that the reason that you first came over here was because of your dad. Your dad mm. is from here, but he moved over to America. Yeah. Just you just have never gone back home so um, far? Yeah, no, so far no. I do I do want to go back home and, and settle down there eventually. Um, but it is a little bit funny, like my dad went over to America when he was eighteen to play football and then he hasn't come back and so now I'm here and like I haven't gone back it's sort of like a little bit of like a generational thing I don't know but I do plan to go back and and go home to North Carolina eventually whether that be in five years or a year I, I don't know I sort of just go by day by day but whenever Ballyclare are premiership side and you've got them settled oh yeah that, no, I wouldn't leave that them. under 19 squad has won the thing in uh, America and all. yeah no I just I, I'll stay here as long as I'm healthy to play football as long as I'm able do you know I, I think that's a big priority for me because once once I'm unable to play, then I have to, you know, just be a, a normal adult and go to work and, and do all that. So, yeah, no, I, I just want to play football for as long as I can. So, And Kate, is your goal this year to kind of get that experience, another year of experience with Derry and then maybe I another move somewhere else across the water? Definitely, just looking ahead for this season just to get as many minutes as I can and do as well as I can for Derry. Perfect. Thank you so much for both joining me today. I'm so excited to see how you both get on this season. That's it for another episode of the Northern Ireland Women's Football Show. Thank you so much for joining. But for now, it's goodbye from me.